Reverend What's up, everybody? It's Reverend Leon Parker, lead pastor of St. Luke CME Church. As a community-based church, we are dedicated to exploring opportunities that will enhance the standard of living and save souls for the kingdom of God. Here at St. Luke, we are committed to impacting lives by building an essential church through relevant ministries that touches lives, meets needs, and glorifies God. We invite you to join our worship experience every Sunday at 10 a.m. as we embrace God's word and God's people. To learn more about our community, we encourage you to visit our website at www.saintruth.cme.org. God bless you, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I said praise God. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Parker, lead pastor of the St. Luke CME Church, and we welcome you to another Sunday of worship, another Sunday of celebrating our fearless women of the Bible. We're so glad that you're streaming with us this morning. We want you to do us a favor. Right at the bottom of your screen, at the bottom of your cell phone, there's a share button. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and participate in the Great Commission as we share the world, as we share our praise and worship this morning to the entire world, letting the world know that Jesus saves and Jesus reigns. At this time, we're going to ask that you would join us for a word of prayer, and we'll go right into praise and worship. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you yet for another day, another opportunity to sing your praises and to give you glory. Father God, we ask right now that as we enter into a spirit of worship, that you would remove all distractions so that we can give you total praise and total glory. Bless all those who are here in the sanctuary and bless those who are streaming with us across the world. And any way you bless us, we will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor because you are powerful, you are great, and you are worthy to be praised. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, St. Luke. Good morning. Good morning, St. Luke. Hallelujah. It is praise and worship time. Glory. It is praise and Hallelujah. worship time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing.
Though you are higher than any yeah, 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 yeah. other, our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are high. You sit high, Lord. You're here. You're awesome in power. You're our God. Help me sing. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Some power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with the power and the power. 
You're awesome, Jesus. You're awesome, Jesus. And you reign oh, from heaven above. We serve an awesome God. You're awesome, Jesus. You're awesome, Jesus. You're awesome, Jesus. You reign. We thank you that you reign. We thank you that you reign, Jesus. You are. You are. You are an awesome God. And you reign forevermore. Forevermore, yeah. Our God is an awesome God. Yes, you are. and contribution to St. Luke's CME Church and partnering with us to build an essential church through relevant ministries that touch lives, meet needs, and glorifies God. Your gifts enable us to focus on education, community development, legacy giving, and creating God's kingdom for all people and all generations. There are five ways to give to St. Luke. Please go to stlukecme.org and click the giving tab or text the word GIVE to 615-334-5900. You can also bring your contributions to the church office during normal business hours or mail your contribution to St. Luke CME Church, 2008 Ed Temple Boulevard, Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. We invite you to download the EasyTide app available for all smart devices in your application store. 
Thank you for giving to St. Luke CME Church as we embrace God's word and God's people. And we declare a blessing over your gift. Truly, if you give, it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For my good, and I know that all things work together. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. We're so glad once more that you are worshiping with us this morning. We thank God for all of you, each and every one of you. And as we continue through our sermon series, The Women of the Bible, She is Fierce. It gave me a great privilege and an honor to introduce someone you all know. But I must pause for station identification. She is the air that I breathe. She's the sugar in my coffee in the morning. You ought to say amen right there. But more importantly, she is a fierce woman in her own right. And we give God the glory for her as she has recently received her elders orders in the United Methodist Church. Brothers and sisters, will you please help me welcome your first lady, your reverend, our pastor, my pastor. I'm her pastor too. We pass each other. You ought to say amen. The Reverend Nathalie Nelson Parker. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything that I need. He helps me rest in the meadow's grass, and he leads me. Beside the quiet street, he restores my failing and helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. in his arms because the Lord is my shepherd I have everything that I need he helps me rest in the man Beside the quiet street, he restores my failing hand, and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. I'm safe, Lord, I'm safe in your arms. When the storm, when the storm of life, of life is great.
Lord, I'm saved. Saved. Lord, I thank you that I'm saved in your arms. Oh, my mama can't save me, no. My daddy can't save me, no. My brother can't save me, no. My sister can't save me, no. I'm saved. I'm saved. Lord, I'm safe in your arms. Yeah. When you feel like you can't make it and everything is coming against you, just remember that you say He has got his arms around you. God for safety this morning. I said thank God for safety this morning. What a privilege it is to know that when we don't feel safe, we are still safe in God's arms. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> what a privilege it is to know that we are safe in God's arms. Though the weapon may be formed, it shall never prosper. What a privilege it is to know this morning that we are safe in God's arms. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that we are safe in your arms. As we continue our sermon series for this Women's History Month, I invite you to turn your Bibles, your cell phones, your tablets, your smart device to Ruth chapter 3. As we continue the She is Fierce series, Ruth 3, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 13. I invite you to follow along as I read in your hearing. The word of God reads in Ruth, the third chapter, starting from verse one. One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, my daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be well provided for. Now, Boaz, with, the, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours, and tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Somebody say threshing floor. Wash, put on your perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Somebody say best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor. Somebody say threshing floor. 
But don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. And when he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. And he will tell you what to do. And I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor. Somebody say threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. And Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. And in the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned, and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you, he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me since you are a guardian or kinsman redeemer of our family. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he, Boaz, replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. Somebody say, don't be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of your family, there is another who is more closely related than I. Stay here for the night and in the morning. If he wants to do his duty as your kinsman or guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, somebody say surely. As surely as the Lord lives, somebody say surely. As surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word that has come to remind us that even in our threshing floor and the lowest moments in our lives, we are yet safe in your will, safe in your arms. If we only have faith, courage, and wisdom, faith courage and wisdom I invite for you a moment to preach with me and touch your own self and say self you've got to have faith courage and wisdom go ahead and hit your own self and wake yourself up and say self I need a little faith courage and wisdom there are times in our lives that cause our faith to shake and at times feel even that our faith has shattered. In this season where we have lost loved ones too suddenly, whether to sickness or COVID-19, where we are in a season where young people are being senselessly murdered by the hands of police brutality, white supremacy, mental illness, or even the unrelenting realities of poverty, our faith bends towards the realities of the challenges we experience daily as we battle our own mental wellness and work-life balance or simply having enough to make ends meet. In times like these, my brothers and my sisters, we require faith that is fierce, faith that is fearless, and faith that is fixed on the unshakable foundation of Jesus the Christ. As we celebrate during this Women's History Month, the stories of women who were not just fierce, but they were women like Ruth in light of their difficulty and hardship somehow mustered enough strength within themselves to find faith in God, to find strength to stand up for themselves, for their family, for their community, and still have enough courage to move forward during uncertainty. And we see that they also embrace the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to guide them along the way. These women, biblical characters, sheroes of our faith, remind us that even when we're scared, even when we're afraid, God will be our strength. Somebody say strength, courage, and wisdom. 
And so in this text for our consideration today, there are three lessons that I believe is important for us to walk away with. And if you are taking notes, go ahead and put this. Number one, we need to understand that whatever is happening externally around us, whatever we are feeling, whatever is happening, uh, whether it's in our society, in our church, and our community, we must have an understanding that strength is defined from within and never measured from from without. I'm going to say that again. Number one, strength is defined from within and is never measured from without. Ruth was a woman who was on the margins uh, in, the, in multiple ways. She was a widow. She had no financial security. She was, had no social ability to take care of herself. She was a Moabite, so culturally she was seen as less than. And she inherited a reputation of a people on top of the point that she was a woman who was childish, uh, childless. I want us to understand that her ethnicity labeled her as an enemy of Israel. I want you to understand the complex external factors that wrapped her up in the margins of society. Can I talk to somebody right now who feels like you too big, that you're not cute enough, that you didn't come with the right last name or come from the right zip code? Can I promise you that no matter what happens outside of yourself that if you stand in the mirror and look at yourself and say baby I'm wonderfully and fearfully made that that's enough that's enough that's enough that's enough listen I want us to understand that strength is defined from within and never measured from without and in this particular time, as we are gathering as women for Bible study, we have been exploring the difficulties of the external factors that sometimes weigh us down as women. Brothers, I need y'all to listen to us. I need you to listen to what I'm about to share with you. I need you to understand that sometimes as women, we work more and get paid less. What I need us to understand today is that courage requires deep faith and bold action. You see, the threshing floor in this context is both symbolic and significant. The threshing floor in biblical context can represent the abundance of a blessing and a plentiful harvest or the scarcity and bareness of a barren season. The manner of which we prepare for the flesh, flesh threshing floor experience in our lives is representative of our capacity to see it, to believe it, and to work for it. Come on, Bishop Henry M. Williamson, the vision to see, the faith to believe, and the courage to do. So what are you saying, Pastor Nathalie? I'm glad you asked. Some of us are bound by our own scarcity mindset that we have anemic faith but want abundant blessings. Let me say that again. You want an abundant threshing floor experience, but you have shallow faith. You see, still playing in the sandbox, but we want to sit in the skybox. You want to pray less and get paid more. You want to sleep and be served. You want to reap a harvest from seeds you never planted. Y'all not talking to me today. Listen, what I need you to understand is that courage requires deep faith and bold action. You think Ruth demonstrated the audacity to risk her life literally because of one one pep talk from her mother-in-law. Understand that the jeopardy that what she was putting herself into in the culture of the Old Testament, women were often treated as a less important than men. But yet still Ruth pushed back against the norms and she is seen as an advocate not only for herself but also for her mother-in-law and others. Naomi somehow was able to recognize that though she was poor, that though she had no power, that though she didn't have a word to stand on during that day, that she resigned herself to do what her mother-in-law told her to do. Ruth made the courageous decision to stick with her mother-in-law and decide not only to survive, but to thrive. 
Yet some of us as Christians have shallow and thin, anemic, flimsy faith because it doesn't require us to have courage. It is important that we understand if our faith doesn't require us to do anything, it's because we don't have any accountability. But when we know through scripture, faith does not work that way. We know that faith in scripture tells us that faith without works is dead, that faith without fruit is meaningless, and deep faith requires that we take risk and courage. If your next move doesn't scare you, then your faith is too small. If your next step doesn't require you to get up in the morning and get on your knees, then I need you to check your spiritual blood pressure because deep faith, abiding faith, sustaining faith, requires courage. It requires our hearts to break for the things that break God's heart. It requires our lives to be laid down on the threshing floor at the feet of a redeemer. Come on, Psalms 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Lord, have mercy. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Last point, point number three, wisdom is accepting the truth that you don't know what you don't know. I'm going to say that again. Wisdom is accepting the truth that you don't know what you don't know. I struggle with this test because Ruth is loyal to her Jewish mother-in-law without any assurance that everything will be great. Furthermore, she trusts and accepted Naomi's wisdom, Naomi's God, Naomi's values and judgment without a concrete assurance that it would change the trajectory or the course of her life. I find it even more fascinating that Naomi was willing to prepare her to possibly risk her life to the point of death with the hopes that her work would provide for them and even provide protection. Not only that, but while Naomi instructs Ruth to wait for Boaz to tell her what to do, instead of that, Ruth boldly requests protection from him. She tampers with Naomi's script and is voluntarily sticking out her neck in order to rescue Naomi's family. Instead of hoping that Boaz will respond with an offer that only protects Ruth herself, she reminds him of the legal responsibility he has as a former father-in-law in the family. She doesn't just seek her own safety, but that of Naomi's family as well. You see, wisdom is accepting the truth that you don't know what you don't know and still do it afraid. Naomi loved Ruth enough to push her beyond her own limitations, capacity, and comfort level to put her in the presence of her redeemer and her future husband. Some of us don't want to be pushed because we don't want to be held accountable. And some of us don't want to move from anemic faith to deep faith because we lack the courage. What I want us to understand today for the next trajectory of where God is taking you in life, it, it requires you to have wisdom to accept the fact that you don't know what you don't know. And grace, is the, uh, uh, is the, grace gives us the responsibility to trust God even though we don't know the outcomes. Some of us are so controlling, manipulative, and conniving that we believe that we can tell our lives what it needs to be. We believe that we can tell our church what it needs to be. We believe we can tell our children who they need to be. When God is telling us wisdom is understanding that I am God and and I'm in control, and I'm God all by myself. All you need to do is take the next step. 
wisdom is aligning our obedience with sacrifice to freely accept God's grace. And so it's in within that context we see that Ruth is a trailblazer to understand what it means to walk forward and have courage and wisdom. Noah, despite of the sunny forecast, was willing to build an ark for rain that he didn't see. Rahab, in light of her sketchy past, had the wisdom to know if she blessed God's men, it would be better than doing nothing at all. Rosa Parks had the wisdom to know that this crazy 30-something-year-old radical organizer from Atlanta was stretching their faith to create economic mobility in segregated communities. Mary Magdalene had the wisdom to worship while Martha worked, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, had the wisdom to walk in shame and public humiliation to bring forth God's Son. And even Jesus had the wisdom to take up the cup even when he wanted it to let it pass from him. Some of us are too comfortable being comfortable. And the blessing is on the other side of our wisdom to know that we don't know what we don't know. What I'm saying to us today is wisdom is accepting God's grace and receiving the Lord's rule over our lives, even when we don't know what the next step is or we can't control the outcomes or manipulate the measurements and clearly line up what is in the road ahead. Wisdom is the extent to which we receive God's grace and our capacity to be obedient and sacrifice whenever and whatever comes our way. You can't be controlling and be called. You cannot set up limits to your own obedience and still live in abundance. And we cannot have success without sacrifice. Wisdom is knowing that the fear of the Lord, <laughs> I need you to walk in that. Wisdom is knowing that the fear of the Lord is where our knowledge begins. Fools despise wisdom and instruction, but the wise lean in. God used Ruth's faith, courage, and wisdom in such a powerful way that it not only restored her personal protection, but it allowed her to play a prominent part, a fearless role in Jesus' family, in God's story, and in our biblical heritage. Ruth has come to know that one true God by marriage, one marriage that ended in pain and suffering, but by her boldness has awakened and reminded a new power of relationship that could only be found in in God. We might face hard times and in our walk if of faith it may seem difficult but just like Ruth, our source of strength and energy for living as a believer must come from our wisdom to know God is in control. Tonight whoever you are and this morning, whoever you are, wherever you are in life's journey, you need faith, courage, and wisdom to take the next step to who God is calling you to be. So grateful for that word that Pastor Natalie has blessed us with. I don't know about you, but uh, three things you need in this life is strength, is courage, and wisdom. And the songwriter says, through all that you go through, if you lean and trust in God, he will see you through, he will pull you through. And so we extend this invitation to you right now, wherever you are. 
uh, there's a phone number on the screen. There's an email on the screen. We want you to reach out to us because the reality is, is that no one can make it in this world without Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We want to make sure uh, that when your time comes, when your time expires, that you have a ticket to eternity. So whoever you are, whether you need prayer, uh, whether you need uh, an opportunity to join a church home, or more importantly, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we invite you to reach out to the St. Luke CME Church, where our mission is simple. We are touching lives, meeting needs, and glorifying God. We are touching lives through outreach, through providing Bible studies and small groups and opportunities for men and women to share. We're meeting needs by serving our community, consistently doing outreach, and we are glorifying God through our worship and through all of our spiritual disciplines. We want you to be a part of our family, and if that's you, we encourage you to reach out. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's as simple as accepting, believing, and confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Romans 10 and 9 says that if we accept and believe Jesus Christ in our hearts and spirit, we shall be saved. We thank you, God, right now for the grace, for your mercy, and for your love. And then this opportunity, this appeal right now is for those who may be seeking or may have the urge to want to rededicate their lives to Christ. The reality is, is that we can attend church, we can attend virtual worship, but every now and again we get away from God and we move beside his will and his way. And sometimes God needs to call us back. And so God has placed on my heart this morning for an opportunity for those who need to rededicate to rededicate themselves right now. And it's so simple. All you have to do is raise your hands with the right heart and the right spirit and say, Lord, forgive me. I've fallen short of your glory, but I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. Lord God, cleanse me, clean me, wash me, Lord God. Wash me, Lord God. Renew my mind and my spirit right now, Lord God. Put me back on track, Lord God. I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm walking uh, through the faces of evil. I'm walking through confusion, Lord God, and I need you to pick me up right now. Lord God, bless my family. Bless my mind. Bless my finances, Lord God. I need you right now to come into my heart and renew me. If you prayed that prayer, God receives it and God honors it. And so as you prayed that prayer of rededication, now you need to walk in the spirit of truth. Now you need to walk, as the preacher shared with us, with strength with courage and wisdom to do your master's will. And now, God, we pray right now for this church, the St. Luke CME Church. We pray, Lord God, that you would touch all of its members, that you would touch all of its friends. We thank, Lord God, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us, for healing us, for directing us. Now, God, we ask that you would cover this campus as we provide housing, for our seniors, as we provide relevant ministries, and as we give you the glory. We're not perfect, Lord God, but we're saved by your grace and your mercy. Through all that we have gone through, we know that it was you. It was you pulling us through. And we know, God, that you will not put more on us than we can bear. And so we're going to shout. We're going to give you the glory. We're going to say thank you right now because the battle's already won. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Receive now this benediction. Go now in peace, and may the peace of God go with you. Receive this benediction that it is by prayer that God would enlarge your territory. It is my prayer that God would continue to keep you from danger seen and unseen. It is my prayer that as you walk forward to another day, a new week, that God will reveal some things, that God will bless you with things that you didn't expect to come your way. We love you, God bless you, and we'll see you next week.
boxers who come into this boxing ring come in with a plan to win. But if they expect to win, they're gonna have to train. They're gonna have to hit the bags, have to lift the weights, they're gonna have to bob and weave, they're gonna have to run, because they wanna be ready for the fight if they plan to win. Men today are living in a boxing ring. There is a fight. They're battling workaholism. They're battling to save their marriages. They're battling addictions of pornography or alcohol or a myriad of other things. They're battling for their own manhood and their own identity. In these eight sessions, we want to see God move in your life so that he removes any excuse for you losing in the ring of life and the battles of life that you face. Welcome to our Bible study. No more excuses.